Rick back at the naturopath. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Before we jump into this video, don't forget at the end of the video, you can download some free resources that I've created just for you. The Candida Diet and Cleanse Starter Guide, the ultimate Candida uh, shopping list, the diet shopping list, and also the Candida, Candida Symptom Tracker, which you're gonna find very useful. So these are all for free. So at the end of the video, just jump into yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies and you can, down, you can download these things at no charge at all. If you have any questions, remember you can always ask those and either I can get back to you or the team. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch up with you at the end of the video. Hey naturopath, how are you guys going? Thanks for coming back. Let's talk about some of the most anti-inflammatory foods you can eat. So these are anti-pizza food, anti-Coca-Cola, anti-Kentucky Fried Chicken, anti-McDonald's um, foods, okay? These are basically the opposite. So the people who eat all that kind of stuff I just mentioned likely don't eat a lot of this stuff I'm going to mention now. We'll talk about the inflammatory foods later. McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell, um, Krispy Kreme, I can probably read out a whole list as long as both arms put together. These are the foods that you want to avoid. The foods I just mentioned there. These are inflammatory foods. They inflame, okay? It's like someone poking you with a needle all the time. It hurts. So those are the foods you've got to avoid. So <clears throat> let's look at the anti-inflammatory. Probably one of the best foods you can eat for reducing inflammation is something I've got right there in the yard at the moment. Raspberries and blueberries. I've got about a 20 meter long stand of raspberries growing. There's just pounds and pounds hanging there, ready to pick. So we're normally picking from now right through for another four to six weeks, probably even eight weeks. And I normally snap freeze them and I put them in a big bag and then vacuum pack them. But I would eat easily a small bowl every day of raspberries. Blueberries are coming in in the next few weeks and um, we've got about 30 blueberry bushes and we, we eat blueberries all the time. So these Berries contain anthocyanins. They contain very powerful compounds that reduce inflammation in the body. There is no doubt, all the studies I've looked at show that people eat blueberries long term, they've got great vision, they've got nice skin, they've got better circulation. The person just looks and feels younger. Berries make the biggest difference in your life. If I could get every person out there eating a small amount of berries every day, they slowly find that their need for all that junk I spoke before will go down, down, down. You don't go to McDonald's to buy a big serving of raspberries. If you do, it's probably got about five tablespoons of sugar in with it, you know. So the berries, I'm just reading off my computer over here. I've got a computer here and here now. It's crazy. So the berries contain the antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. I've got a composite of 25 different studies here <clears throat> on longevity showing you how amazing blueberries are, especially for older people my age. Blueberries are one of the best. I've got a problem with one of my eyes, with my left eye, uh, with the pressure. I've got um, problem pressure problems in the family. Um, but the berries are keeping it at bay without medication, so which is a really good thing. The intraocular pressure can go up, but blueberries are shown to reduce that. So reduce inflammation. I don't take any medications and I never will. I'm not a, a medication person. So berries really are, in my opinion, the, one of the pinnacle foods for reducing inflammation. The second one is fatty fish. Now, how many people out there eat fatty fish? I like um, herring that's raw or that's pickled. So oily fish or fatty fish. So fatty fish contains two major compounds, EPA and DHA, which are both anti-inflammatory fatty acids. So eating fatty fish every day or having one or two capsules of a good omega-3 can make the world of difference for your circulation especially, right? And again, research has shown this, that people who eat a lot of um, fatty acids uh, coming from fish tend to have lower blood pressure. They tend to suffer less from strokes or heart attacks or sudden heart death. There is no doubt, there is no doubt, the evidence is overwhelming that fatty fish or fish oil is one of the top five of all anti-inflammatory foods. So if you want an anti-inflammatory, fish oil or eating fish. And of course, the brassicas, some of my favorite foods. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. They're lovely steamed with a bit of nutmeg on top. You try that. So 
the cruciferous vegetables um, contain sulfurophanes, which again, a powerful antioxidant compound that reduce inflammation throughout the body. So phenomenal. Brassic, the brassicas are also great for cleansing the liver and improving bile flow. They're a bitter food. So these things also help to reduce levels of inflammatory cytokines in the body or chemicals made by your blood, your white blood cells. The fourth one, again, another food I grow, avocados. There are two avocado trees at the moment. We've got several hundred avocados hanging off them. We eat avocados every day. And so I have one big avocado every single day. <clears throat> when you eat avocados, you ain't got a, you've got an anti-pooping problem. You are pooping like a bird. You will never, ever, ever have a pooping problem if you eat one avocado per day. Never have a pooping problem. Not only that, your skin will look almost as good as mine. Well, my skin's not that bad, is it? But avocados contain up to 40% fat or more plant-based fats. They contain, it's basically nature's big green vitamin pill. So people who eat avocados all the time are getting an incredible amount of potassium, magnesium, calcium, all of these minerals that come from the ground going into the fats of the plant. Carotenoids, tocopherols, and vitamin E. So studies have also shown that people who eat avocados every day have got a significantly reduced rate of heart problems and circulatory problems. Why do people eat burgers and fatty crap when they can eat food like avocados, you know? Green fatty stuff, it's just wonderful. So the other interesting thing I found studies with avocados is people who eat avocados all the time don't seem to have weight problems, okay? They don't. Avocados, a good size avocado is like eating a, probably a two pound steak. You won't want any food for a long time after that, right? In one high quality study, 51 adults with excess weight who ate an avocado for 12 weeks had markedly reduced inflammatory markers of interleukin-1 beta, and C-reactive protein. So again, studies can validate all the nonsense I'm coming up with, okay? Um, let's have a look at some other ones. There are so many we could talk about. There's grapes, there's mushrooms, turmeric. Turmeric is another one. There are many spices that actually work as anti-inflammatory agents too. You know, um, clove, turmeric, nutmeg. These are all got particular compounds in them that work on boosting aspects of your immune system and reducing the inflammatory mediators in the body. So spices are something I really like people um, to incorporate in their diet. Western people, I don't care if you live in New York or LA or Kentucky, wherever you live, you can still have turmeric in your diet. You don't have to be in Calcutta to have rice and curry and turmeric. You can live anywhere. So if we look back in the 50s or 60s, probably nobody in the States really had curry unless they came from another country. Popular in the UK, but all these spices belong in curries. And curries made properly are some of the best dishes you'll ever eat. Extra virgin olive oil, another fantastic anti-inflammatory compound. Okay, so this is a staple of the Mediterranean diet. So, and again, several studies have shown remarked um, droppings in high sensitivity CRP. So try and get used to having olive oil in your diet, one tablespoon a day. And again, if you eat oil every day, you won't have a pooping problem. Also, you're going to get such an incredibly good result long term with your blood, your heart and your blood pressure with olive oil. So it's a fantastic food. Chocolate, cocoa. We're only talking one or two small slices a day. So green tea and chocolate are similar in that they've got compounds uh, that have a similar kind of effect in the body. Very powerful anti-inflammatory effects. They've got flavonols in them. So when you choose to consume a small block of chocolate a day, you're consuming a small piece of anti-inflammatory compound. But we're not talking a family block per day. Now, there's a problem again. People go excess. One glass of wine, good. But a bottle a day, not so good. Right? Any food you can eat. But I would love to see people eat six or eight avocados a day. I don't see it because you just get sick of eating so much. I mean, one good size avocado is all you can consume. So if we look at these anti-inflammatory foods, they're all natural foods, you know? Berries, the fish, avocados, uh, grapes, of course, belong in that. Chocolate, green tea, they all belong in here. Many different spices. Uh, garlic, I believe, also is anti-inflammatory. Turmeric, many different types of herbs you can you can um, add to your diet, like oregano and thyme and basil. They're all anti-inflammatory foods. The more you drift towards these type of foods, 
the less you'll tend to want that stuff I said at the beginning, the golden arches and all that kind of stuff. You know? So try and consume some of these foods in your diet regularly and you'll find some big differences. Thanks for tuning in. Things. It's Eric Backer again, the naturopath. I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, go to yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies if you want to download my free resources I've created just for people like you. These are things I used in the clinic for patients and you'll find them very useful. It's the free candida diet, the cleanse. So it's a good introduction on how to set your program together. There's the ultimate candida diet shopping list and there's also the candida symptom tracker. Yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies. Thanks for tuning in and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.